Well, to start off part two, we have the Swalock clone. I get it, I get it. A lot of Yanova players hate Garbodor. We got it. But to me, personally, I I can't be mad at Garbodor. I, I love its design because it's a pile of trash over muck. I mean, like, look at it. It's, like, literally a pile of trash over a pile of shit. You know? So... The or and then the origin also makes it very interesting of a Pokemon too, but I tried to put it very very low on the list because a lot of you know players hate it, and I don't blame you. But I think I the reason why I love Garbodor so damn much is because of its design. Seriously, I I cannot stay mad at this Pokemon for too damn long. Alright, at number 100, okay, here we go. Raichu. Yeah, now, I understand that a lot of people are gonna get very, very upset with me that Raichu's even on here, but hear me out. Hear me out on this. In the anime, Raichu is, oh my god, I get it, it's so much better than Pikachu in the games, but god damn it. Every time I see Raichu and it first kicks Pikachu's ass, like, the first time, and then the second time, you're like, Yes! Pikachu just kicked Raichu's ass! It feels so good! It's like, yeah! And that's the reason why mostly I love Raichu so damn much. Is, you know, the first time, you know, you see it fight Lieutenant Surge and you Pikachu actually beats it. And then in Diamond and Pearl, which is the only time I really remember it, um, when that Raichu was way better than Lieutenant Surge's, and Pikachu still managed to beat it. It's like, there's nothing wrong with that. Although, when I got one in the games for Platinum, that's where it's at this spot. Because Raichu, for me, when, I don't know if it was because I evolved it way too quick, quickly, but I feel like that's what it is. I evolved it way too quickly, and it just sucked. It's, you know, slightly better than my next pick, or slightly lower than my next pick, but god damn it, I wish Raichu was a lot better in terms of me using it. Alright, next one. Okay, so if you put a gun to my face and told me, which is your favorite out of the original EV evolutions, being Flareon, Jolteon, and Vaporeon? I picked Vaporeon. Now, stupidly, what I should have done was wait later on and involved in something different by EV, but in Platinum, I decided to pick Vaporeon because I kind of just like its design and then the anime episode where Vaporeon is in. But... Like Raichu, I don't know what the hell I did, but Vaporeon sucked. I think I evolved it again, like I said, for Raichu. I evolved it way too early. But Vaporeon is, was still on my Platinum team, but it sucked as well. So these are why these two are on this list, Raichu and Vaporeon, is because I had them on my Platinum team, but they both... Yeah, failed in the in the offensive apartment or even defensive apartment. They just had good speed and that was about it for any of them, which was kind of upsetting. But at the same time, you know what? I'm still glad I had them. Why not? Oh, here we go. Here we go. The more recently memed Pokemon. For it. Now, when I got Heart Gold, I so wanted to get a Furret. I want. I I'm being 100% honest with you. When I saw Furret for the first time, I was like, "That thing will be mine." And <laughs> and you know what? Funny enough, there are so many memes on Furret that I didn't even realize were memes. First one being that Furret is actually bigger than Charizard. I, I'm serious, look that up. And then the second one, and that's the more recent one, is 
for its walking. Yep. And if you want to see that video, I'll put it in the description fully, but other than that, you know, the time that I actually saw for it, you know, it's a normal type, and it's, it's like, I wish it could be something else, but it's not. It's just a normal type, you know, but it's still good nonetheless, and besides, it's cute. I can't argue with that. Alright, Lady Ba. Yeah, the the second I also looked at this one, I, I was like, okay, it's a ladybug. Awesome. But the real reason why Lady Ba is even on this list is because of Mystery Dungeon once again. This Pokemon, I so wanted on my team, and it, it, I think it was, I don't remember where I wanted to get it so badly, but I think it was someplace in the original game where I grinded the crap out of it, and eventually I did get a Lady Ma, and I was like, oh my god, yes! I love this thing so damn much! <laughs> and, uh, like with, uh, Fanfy, uh, the same family member, uh, she absolutely loves Ladybugs, so I dedicate L Lady Ma even on this list because of her as well. And then the grinding that I took for Mystery Dungeon. What? Another Gen 2 Pokemon? And it's also a bug flying type? What is wrong with you? Uh, guys, seriously, why you complaining? Why you complaining about Yanma? Come on. It eventually evolves into something badass later on. Come on. Come on, just hear me out. Yanma, again, was another Pokemon from Mystery Dungeon, like Lady Ba, that I grinded the shit for. And this time, I actually knew where I grinded Yanma. Silent Chasm. And, oh my god, when I eventually got Yanma, it's a freaking badass. With its agility and then quick attack, and like, god damn it. You cannot hate Yanma back in the day. You can't. And then when it eventually evolves into, it's like, holy shit. I mean, dude, it's just a dragonfly. Like, you cannot argue about it. You can't. Because it's, it's a badass dragonfly, even though everybody complains on how bad bug-flying-type Pokemon are. So, that's the real reason why it's so low, is just because, you know, everybody hates bug-flying-type and... You know, to be honest, if any of you watched this video and were complaining about bug flying type to begin with, well then screw you. Because there are a lot of bug flying type, and to be honest with you, I just love bug flying type because, you know, they are... I just love the design, so let's put it at that. Yanma basically is a dragon. Is a dragonfly, so there you go. Oh, pe people will not shut me up about this one. Honita. A flaming freaking horse. Yep, it, I will definitely take that one into the, into the effect. It's cute, and granted, I do love uh, Rapidash a lot more. Uh, I do like Rapidash, but, I mean, between a flaming pony and a flaming unicorn, I'd rather take the flaming pony over the unicorn. I'm sorry. That's just me. But other than that, Ponyta is actually pretty decent for a fire type. Like, the really high speed and high attack stats just add up. And it's like, that's amazing. That's freaking awesome. So, Ponyta is on this list only because it's the one horse Pokemon that I actually do like. Okay, yet another odd Pokemon that I do like. Sawsbuck. Now, Sawsbuck, when I saw it for the first time, I got, um, another deer Pokemon? Like, I mean, Stantler was okay in terms of what it was, but I think... Uh, to me, Sawsbuck is now the definitive deer. 
And why is that? It's because not only because Deerling, I mean, get it, because it's a fawn, and then it evolves into an actual adult deer. But it also changes with the seasons. And there's going to be a lot of people that argue with me down in the comments, like, what their favorite season for Sawsbuck is. But to be perfectly honest, to be 100% honest with you guys, I love the summer. I love the summer version of Sawsbuck. And I know a lot of people are going to hate me, but I, I get it. It's bland and whatnot. But look at the other seasons. They kind of just... Uh... I looked at spring and I went, nope, that's too few of a design. I looked at fall and I went, that's a little excessive with the... Uh, leaves being bent out and that the antlers look like a will uh, weeping willow tree and then the winter one i just went uh no again no leaves on the on the damn antlers so what the hell's the point you know so for really really honestly why sawsbuck's even on here is because i'm a long time hunter and to be honest if sawsbuck were real God damn it. There's going to be a lot of people that hate me. Um, I would hunt Sawsbuck like no man's business. I'm not trying to say that I would poach it, but every year when it's hunting season, I would hunt a Sawsbuck. I'm not going to lie. So that's why Sawsbuck's even on this list. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Here we go. Glaceon. Now, granted, this one doesn't get too much love. I mean, when you compare it to Leafeon, Glaceon really doesn't get that much attention. And besides, I love her design. I'm not gonna lie. And she's a pretty good ice type. I mean, over a Bomba Snow, which, by the way, is ice grass type, I just want to point that out. Uh, Glaceon's the, like, a really good ice type. I mean, besides Weavile, but Weavile we've already covered. Has ridiculous speed. And I mean, it, granted, granted, if you want a speedy ice type, Weavile's better. But if you're looking just for a cute ice type, like I was, then Glaceon's pretty damn good for what it does. It's a good, it's a good fighting Pokemon, and it's, it's, it's so damn cute. I can't argue. It, it's adorable. I can't get rid of it. Alright, number 92, Reuniclus. I probably butchered it after all these years, and I still probably butchered it even if I was a kid again. I'd still probably butcher this one, but literally, the concept of this thing is a mass of cells. Like, damn! As a bio nerd, this thing is pretty damn awesome. This thing is freaking awesome. And it's a good sweeper, too. And quite frankly, this is a lot... This is a reason why so many people picked... I think it's white over black. They picked white over white over black because of Reuniclus over the other Pokemon that's in there, which I'm not going to argue. And it also has a ridiculous amount of health and a ridiculous amount of special attack, which basically means to any opponent, like, you're screwed when this thing comes onto the field. You are screwed. And if it's, it's psychic typing, it just makes it really, really unique. So, Reuniclus is on here because, for real, for real, as a bio nerd, the ball of cells, holy shit, it's a ball of cells that will kill the absolute crap out of an opponent's team. And I love it. <sighs> oh, the anime feels right now. Yes. At 91, we have Butterfree. God damn it, I loved Ash's Butterfree. I mean, granted, his Caterpie had more character, but 
God damn it, I love Butterfree a hell of a lot more. And it was very sad for me as a fan watching it that Ash had to let it go. Especially when he traded it for Eradicate. Like, where's... Why, why tease that, you freaking buttholes? Seriously. Stop it. Uh, <laughs> so... And then not only that, Butterfree has been another one of those characters in Mystery Dungeon that has shined. And then when I got Heart Gold, as soon as I saw a Caterpie, I went, catch, and then I trained the living crap out of it so I can get a Butterfree for my own. And you know what? The price of getting that Butterfree was so worth it. Let's be honest. And I mean, come on, Butterfree is absolutely kind of cute. I mean, it's not cute like Butterfree cute, but god damn it, I loved Butterfree so damn much. And that's the real reason why she, he or she is even on this list, because of that. Okay, at number 90, we have Anarith. Now, a lot of you, a lot of you people are going to say this. What? What about Armaldo? Armaldo is so much better in any other stat compared to Anorith. Okay, you are definitely right. Armaldo is a freaking beast of a fossil Pokemon. I am not arguing with that. But Anorith, to me, the reason why Anorith is on here instead of Armaldo is because Anorith, to me is basically the design. It's basically the design of the Pokemon. Anorith, when I first saw Anorith, I said to myself, as a fossil nerd, I said, oh my god, that totally looks like uh, Amnomalacaris, which, if none of you know what it is, I, I don't know, I don't blame you. Amnomalacaris is basically... If you want to put it, what Armaldo looks like, or not Armaldo, Anorith, sorry. <laughs> it's alright. Um, basically, Anomalocaris looks exactly like Anorith. And if you really don't know what Anomalocaris was, then it's basically the first Super Predator, and it was an arthropod. No joke. Yeah, bugs pretty much ruled before any of us uh, Chordates ever existed. So, yeah, and then not only that, not only because it's a fossil Pokemon, so no shit why it would be on this list, but because, you know, this was another Pokemon from Mystery Dungeon that I just first saw, and I went, hell yeah, like, that's pretty goddamn cool. So, Anorith is on that spot because of that. Number 89, <laughs> Gabite. God damn it. The real reason why Gabite's even on this list to begin with is because of the Mystery Dungeon anime. Now, to be fair, Gabite over Skarmory, I would take the Skarmory over Gabite. But Gabite, nonetheless, was still a huge freaking threat. Like, god damn it. But, you know, in the game, when you actually do play the mission... Ugh, oh, god, here we go. I'm just gonna spew this quote out, because this is pretty much how the fight goes in the actual game itself. Hey, look, I made a bridge. It only took me, like, what, ten seconds? Tops. <laughs> so, you know how bad this fight is compared to the anime when you're done with the fight in 10 seconds, literally. Like, the fight isn't even nearly as awesome as it is in the anime itself. So, to be honest, I'm telling you this right now, that Gabite in the in the uh, game itself sucks, but in the anime, he's fucking a badass. And 
Not gonna lie, in the actual main games itself, it's better to get a Garchomp over Gabite, even though Gabite kinda has this wicked design that I actually do kinda like, and it's memorable too. It's very memorable Pokemon, but not as powerful as most people would want him to be. Ugh. Oh. Oh, another Mystery Dungeon character? Yes. Skunk Tank. God damn it. Not only is it a badass skunk, which I love its design, by the way, over Skunky. Not only that, but because it's the leader of Team Skull in Mystery Dungeon. And he basically... Once he shows up, he one-shots the actual human character with his with his poisonous gas. Which, holy shit! Even the other guild members are like, what the hell? Like, why is this thing so OP? And I'm like, yeah, I can't I can't argue. I cannot argue with Skunk Tank. Also, Team Galactic had one, and to be fair. They didn't use it to its full potential, but it's still awesome to see that even Team Galactic from the main games understands how badass Skunk Tank is. I mean, they have a Toxic Croak, but over Toxic Croak, I will definitely pick Skunk Tank any day. I'm so serious. Okay, number 87, Togekiss. Now, you're probably wondering, what, wait, what, Smaug? What the hell? Why is Togekiss this high on the list? Okay, I'll tell you. Togekiss is super damn adorable. I mean, screw Togepi, screw the other mid-version, which I completely forgot about. Screw those two. I mean, Togepi, I mean, I will admit, is pretty famous from the anime. I will admit that. But Togekiss, goddamn, as soon as I saw it, I went, ah, Like, goddamn it. I mean, I don't mean to be, like, all cutesy and shit like that, but goddamn it, this is my list, so deal. But other than that, the real reason why Togekiss is even on here is because of Dawn. Dawn's Togekiss is so elegant, like, goddamn it. All it just does is a flick of its hand, and boom, it whips your ass. Like, god damn. I mean, it takes a long time to level it up, but Jesus Christ, once you get it, it's so worth it in the end. And then, not only that, in the main games itself, it's got good special attack and special defense, which basically, you know means that it does a very good job at whatever the hell it does, where you depend where it depends on where you use it. I mean, seriously. Togekiss, to be honest, I love. I love Togekiss. Oh oh Mike. Oh Mike, why are you so damn low? If you don't know this, then Prepare yourselves. At number 86, Superior. When I played my version of White, I picked Snivy as my starter. Okay, God damn it, let's move on from that. And then once I got it up to Superior, like, God damn it, all it did was sweep, 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 sweep. It was pretty much my sweeper, but... Why do I call it Mike, you ask? Well, funny thing is, I just did. I just named it Mike. Why not? You know, nickname your uh, superior any nickname your Pokemon anything, and you decide to go with a human name. How dare you? Yeah. But when I recall back to my days of playing black and white, Mike was not really too much impressive other than the other Pokemon that I do actually own. I mean, Mike was good for what he did, but goddammit, he's not as popular as the other Pokemon that I 
do love more on my list. Oh, hell yeah. This is why you guys should not be pissed off at Yanma. Because next we have Yanmega. God damn. Now, the real reason why Yanmega is even higher than Yanma is because of two things. One, it's based off of Neganira, which is basically a giant dragon, extinct giant dragonfly. The second reason is because of Jesse. Jesse owned a Yanmega, and god damn it, I loved her Yanmega. I just, I just did. Not only that, but Yanmega also has ridiculous speed and ridiculous and slightly better attack. But other than that, it's a really good sweeper, and god damn it, it does it freaking well. Okay, at number eighty-four, we have Bayleaf. Now. The funny story about Bayleaf, let me get to this, to this point, is that every time somebody says for an herb is to go get Bayleaf, I always picture in my mind the Bayleaf in Pokemon, and I'm just like, uh, really? You want me to get one? Okay. I, walk, I start walking outside, and they're just all like confused, like, what the hell is this guy doing? And I'm just like, oh, oh, you mean the other type of Bayleaf. Oh, I got ya. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean to sound like an ass to anybody, but that's what always goes in my mind whenever I picture Bayleaf. Like, goddammit. And then also, I loved Ash's Bayleaf. Once he got once he got Chikorita, I loved it to begin with, and then when it evolved, oh my god, please sign me up. Sign me up for this, but unfortunately, you know, when I tried playing Heart Gold for the first time, and I got Bayleaf, it didn't work out. Because the game is like, the, all the gym leaders are just like ridiculously hard for the grass starter in this whole region. And I'm just like, please, I want to use it, but I can't for the first two gems, which is a Pain the freaking took us. So, Bayleaf's. The reason why Bayleaf is so damn low like this is because I can't really use it. Okay, at number 83, we have. Food. I, 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 I can't explain Krabby any better than I've already done. Okay, so the story behind Krabby is that every time I go down to either Lewis, Delaware, or even to Ocean City, Maryland, I always want crab on my mind. And funny thing is, every time I want crab, I always picture in my mind, very much like Bailey, I always picture crabs as crabby. And I'm like, yeah, order me up some crabby. Because uh, I want to eat that. <laughs> and there's a good reason why, too. Because, I mean, Krabby is kind of a piece of garbage. But when it evolves into Kingdra, it's so much better. But other than that, face the facts, Krabby's pretty horrible in battle. At number 82, here's another food. Cor Corfish. Yes, we now have the legitimate lobster. Now, some people are going to argue that it's a crayfish. And I'm going to be like, okay, then all my years of saying that it's a lobster are wrong, but whatever. I still feel like it's a lobster. But compared to Krabby, I'd rather not eat a corefish over a Krabby. Because corefish is actually kind of decent in the main game. And then when it evolves into Crawdot... You don't F with crawl dogs. Nobody does. And then also, I love the core fish in the Mystery Dungeon games. Like, because he, he kind of has this little accent too. But other than that, other than being the, the lobster 
of the Pokemon world in my eyes. I love Corefish. I just do. Kowalski? Analysis? Yes. Smog the DM has confirmed this. Piplup is at 81. Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, why is Piplup so damn high? Again, it's very much because of Dawn. God damn it. If you don't understand my love for Dawn right now at this point, then you pretty much can't really understand me. So just just go with it. I love Dawn's Piplup so damn much because of the interactions that she has with Ash's Pikachu. I just do. And I very much miss Piplup a whole lot. I really do. But and then to be honest with the anime version of Piplup. I do kind of love this version um, of the human in this anime than the Squirtle in the other one. I do, I do prefer Piplup over the um, Squirtle. Sorry, but I never really picked um, Piplup when I played Diamond, Pearl, or Platinum at all. Never did. And you run and really know the reason why? It's because Empoleon sucks. Empoleon is probably the worst water starter you are ever going to get. Sorry, Empoleon fans. Your, your starter just sucks. I'm sorry. Oh. Where do you guys want to put this one for a joke? Do we, should we do it now or should we do it later? All right, we'll do it now. God damn it. I love Ursaring so damn much now because of that joke. But not only that, but Ursaring is threatening. Over Bear Tick, I am definitely more afraid to get my ass kicked by an Ursaring. And then when Paul had his Ursaring, God damn. Damn, that thing kicked so much ass and absorbed every blow it took. Damn, what a powerhouse. And not only that, it also has high attack and high and very high health. So, god damn. But the only thing that really stops it from being any higher on anybody's list, including my own, is because it's slow. I mean, it's tanky, but it's slow as all shit. So, nonetheless, Ursaring's on this spot because he's a badass, but at the same time, because he's so slow, you can't really fix that all that well. Oh, Steelix. God damn, you have ridiculous defense. I mean, not only that, but Brock and Jasmine both had a Steelix. God damn, was that freaking worth it to have this Pokemon. I'm not gonna lie. I am honestly not lying to you guys when I said that Steelix is freaking awesome. Over Onyx, I would definitely want to have a Steelix. And because of its smirk-ass design, holy shit... Please, I want a Steelix so bad. Okay, at number 78, we have Gliscor. Now, Gliscor was decent. I will admit that it's decent. That's it. However, the reason why I love Gliscor so much is because of Ash's Gliscor. Ash's Gliscor... In the beginning, not only was afraid of heights and conquered its fear of flying, but then also, goddamn, was it a piece of entertainment that I loved to death. I mean, there are other Pokemon in Ash's team that are way better for entertaining, but I felt it like, in my opinion, when I watched Diamond and Pearl, you know, Gliscor was a joy to watch. 
I'm not gonna argue. Until Ash got his gimbal, that is. But, nonetheless, Gliscor was awesome, and when he did have it... You know, I'm not gonna lie. I miss it very much. Another Pokemon from Ash's team. Oh, hell yes. Heracross is a badass. Do not fuck with Heracross. I'm so serious. Not only is its de regular design is of a rhinoceros beetle, which is probably one of my favorite beetles to exist, but its mega evolution then turns it into a Hercules beetle. And if any of you really know why I love Hercules, any of you understand my love for Hercules, then goddammit, you understand me. Very much. You very much understand me. And then the one time that Heracross was actually a badass was the time that he actually had to fight Gary's Magmar. And it won. It won. And Magmar, being a fire type, should kick the living crap out of Heracross, being a bug type. But no, Heracross won. And I was like, damn. If a bug type could beat a fire type, then holy shit, sign me up for a Heracross. Oh, this is gonna really hate some people. And it's, it's hurting myself even putting this one so low on my list. At number 76, we have Torterra. Now, this was the Pokemon that I freaking owned when I played Sinnoh. This was the only starter I ever owned. And yet, when I played Platinum, there was one other Pokemon higher than Torterra. And I was, I am still ashamed that my Torterra is slightly lower than this other one. But god damn it, I love Torterra. The second I saw it. And I was so proud to own one of these things. It's, mem it's obviously very memorable for me. And it's an absolute tank of a grass type. I am not arguing with anybody on that point. Plus, its design is badass. There is no arguing with this. Torterra overall, I love him, but Jesus Christ, I wish, and I do mean I wish, my Torterra was a lot stronger than my other Pokemon that I had on my Platinum team. Alright, at number 75, the First legendary Pokemon to be even on this list, and which me and you know that's saying something. First legendary, Ho Oh. Now Ho Oh for me, there's a huge list of reasons. For one, let's get this start. Let's get this straight. Ho Oh is the reason why I bought Heart Gold over Soul Silver. Sorry, Lugia fans, but when I saw your mascot, I went. Eh, okay. I mean, I loved Lugia from the second movie, but damn it, Hoa was so much cooler to look at. Damn. Not only that, but its concept is also comes from the Phoenix, from a Phoenix, which is also badass. But not only that, but this was the first legendary that Ash saw. Episode 1, go look that up. ho -Oh is indeed the first legendary Ash saw. And it was only during Episode 1. Episode 1. Like, nonetheless, god damn. And then when eventually Ash meets up with ho -Oh finally, and they have that epic fight, which is not really epic to say the least. I mean, Ash as Pikachu gets his ass literally kicked. But it's still awesome to see this. But nonetheless, the reason why ho -Oh is even this far down on the list is because of its weakness to electric types and fire types and water types. Which is saying something. 
it is saying very much something. So that's why ho is even on my list. I don't want a Kingdra. Kingdra is bad. Don't talk shit about Kingdra! God damn, I love Kingdra. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it does have a unique typing, Water Dragon, which hopefully it should stay as Water Dragon. Please, hopefully. And then, god damn it, very good attack, defense, special attack, and special defense stats. Damn. OP dragon type. It's the first dragon type to ever exist, and that's why it's even high on this list. Is because it's a, it's the one of the first dragon types to ever exist. Like, damn, this thing could kick some major ass. And it gets higher in this spot because of hard gold. And and then when you evolve it eventually into it, you feel extremely proud of yourselves and I mean I wish I got higher in the in the hard gold I really did but if I did capture Seedra it would be well worth it to have a king draw on my team all right Agron yeah Agron this being this low on the list let's just talk about him oh shall we Best way to sum up Agron is that he is an absolute tank. He is a tank. And then not only that, his he is badass. He's so badass, it is enough to scare everybody off as soon as one sees one of these things. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, it is scarier than freaking Ursa Ring. And it's even more badass than him. Damn! So basically, if you put Agron and Ursaring into a one-on-one -on -one fight, Agron would so kick Ursaring's ass, which is already scary enough, in my own opinion. But then not only that, there is also a very, very colorful meme that I just recently found for Agron, and it's worse than all the colorful language that I've already sent on my channel. It's even worse than that. So, I mean, if you really want to give that video a chance and listen to it, I advise you wear headphones for starters. And then secondly, please don't get offended by it. Because, god damn it, you're right. That video is so right. Agron is a badass. Let's just put it at that. And if you want to go and see this video, then link will be down in the description if you guys want to check this one out. Oh, oh my god, yes. Once you load up the games for Kanto, what are the first two Pokemon that you see? Well, really, technically, what's the first one you actually see fully? No, it's not Gengar. I've already, I've already established that fact. It's Nidorino. Now, when I first saw Nidorino, I went, holy shit. And then when the first anime episode started with that opening, I immediately recognized it. I'm like, holy crap. Now we actually get to see this fight play out. That is awesome. So, Nidorino, not only I love Nidorino over uh, Nidoran. So basically, if you have not guessed it, I prefer Nido King over Nido Queen. But Nidorino is still popular because, you know, the nostalgia of loading up red and blue or fire red and leaf green like I did and then watching the first episode of anime and seeing that fight play out. Damn, I love Nidorino. I just do. Plus, his design is also pretty badass before it evolves into Nido King. Which is really, really saying something. Alright, Meganium. Now, goddammit, I love her design, and she is so damn cute. Over Bayleaf, I would definitely prefer Meganium. I mean, this Pokemon, 
this Pokemon to so many other people was like the first legit Apatosaur before we actually got a Apatosaur in the games. But that's besides my point. And not only that, but it's also the reason why you fools have Sceptile in the anime. Seriously, watch that episode, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Now, the reason why Meganium is so low is, like I said, for Bailey. You cannot use it for Heart Gold and Soul Silver. You just can't. The gym leaders are so ridiculously hard that you just it just doesn't work out as well as you want it to be. I'm sorry. As much as I would love to use Meganium in the games, there is another Pokemon that does a hell lot better in the beginning of the other in the beginning of the game over Meganium. And it's just like, damn it, I wish Meganium would get a lot more love than um, back in the day, because back in the day, Meganium didn't really get that much love, but now she does a little bit. And, you know, I kind of just miss the fact that I can't use her. I just can't use her. It's like, damn it, I wish I, I want to put you higher, Meganium, but I can't, because you're not usable in the slightest. Oh. Oh. At number 70, we have Wigglytuff. Now, the roles for Mystery Dungeon is the reason why he's so high. Not only in the original does Wigglytuff give you all the friend zones, the places that you that help you score the other recruits, not only that, but then he's one of the most badass guild leaders in both games. Which is crazy. That is crazy that he's his own guild leader. Like, damn! Like, I really want a Wigglytuff now. Over a Jigglypuff. Like, seriously. Like, think about it. Because Wigglytuff gives you so much good insight as to recruiting people. And then not only that, but he's also very helpful to the other you know, the non-defensive Pokemon in the other Mystery Dungeon. Like, damn it, I want one. You know, so, nonetheless, other than that, it has very high HP stats, which are not something to be impressed about, but they're still good enough for main game status. So if you really wanted to get a Wigglytuff, then go ahead, my friend, get one. Oh, God, at number 69, oh, there's going to be so many people I, that hate me. Yes, we have Gothitelle, the emo version of Gardevoir. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Over the massive ball of cells and the emo version of Gardevoir, I picked the emo version. I'm just like, damn it. I know, a lot of people absolutely hate her design, but I kind of see it, I kind of see past the design, uh, just a little bit. Not much, but I, I look past the design. But not only that, but she also has high special defense, which kind of helps you when you're stuck in a corner. But other than that, I can only, the only other time that I've loved Gothitelle is her role in Poke Park, which is to serve under Dark Ride, but that's besides my point. So, not only that, the real reason why Gothitelle's even in this spot is because she's an emo guard, or just, there's nothing else. Alright, at number 68, we have Persian. So not only does it have great speed, which means it'll kick your ass pretty damn quick, but they I have a very, very long backstory when it comes to Persian. Now, see, all right, I'm going to try to explain this the best that I can through what I've been through. So during elementary school, I took part in Big Brothers Big Sisters which is, you know, obviously the club that, you know, if you're a single child and you want to have a brother or sister, 
there you go. And of course, I had my big brother, who was absolutely in love with Pokemon at the same time that I was. So we got very close with each other very quickly. And he told me, and this is, this is where it gets very, very coincidence. Okay, so not only was his name Giovanni, which is the same villain for Team Rocket, like the same head dude for Team Rocket, not only that, but his favorite Pokemon was Persian. Coincidence? I think not. Like, this, this is just too similar to be excused. Like, damn. Like, really, really huge coincidence. And then, there was a, another joke that was placed for this, and I'm gonna play the clip as soon as I'm done talking here. But, there is a YouTube poop for Kung Fu Panda, which just so happened to have a Pokemon trade, and... Well, I guess from what you could say, this is where this Pokemon shines through once again. And this is why it's on this list. Please, I will give you all that you ask. You have nothing I want. Take my kicker. I won't take your kicker. Take my gold. I won't take your gold, but I will take your version. Oh, hells yeah. Let's talk about Scarberry. Not only does it have the highest defense stat, defense stat, sorry, out of any flying type, but it is also remembered as the Pokemon Kidnapper. It has pretty much kidnapped a lot of Pokemon over the years, especially for Mystery Dungeon where it captured a Diglett, a Pichu, and a Pikachu. Oh my god. I mean, not only does Scarberry have a badass design, but it was technically the first boss I ever fought in a Mystery Dungeon game, which is saying so much. But not only that, I so loved Scarberry. I just do. Skarmory's a badass, and you are not changing my mind for it. At number 66, we have Houndoom. Now, Houndoom, I, I don't really need to explain why I love its design. Its design is freaking awesome. And it also is resembles a Hellhound, which is basically the dogs of hell sent from hell to collect the souls of the victims that's contracts have expired. Damn, is that cool. Not only that, you have very, very unique typing, fire and dark type, which is only seen, I believe, in the Hound Doom line. But not only that, but because it has high, very high special attack and attack. So, damn. Damn. Oh yes, there is a meme lord out there, and he absolutely is loving me right now. So, between any of the originals, when these two originals I'm only talking about are Kaboot Tops and Amistar, I decided to pick Amistar, and the only reason why is because, you know, everybody keeps saying, like, Oh, because it's a trilobite. Kabutops is a trilobite, while Amistar is basically an ammonite. And I definitely prefer ammonites over trilobites. Sorry. I know I live in a state where tons of these suckers are found, but... You know what? I prefer ammonites over trilobites any day. Also, I love its design. It is so kick-ass. And then in the fossil episode... Come on, y'all. Come on. Alright, next up, we have the Pokemon I 
absolutely hate from Mystery Dungeon, the original, at least I'm talking about. And that's Kecleon. Now, Kecleon in the main games is meh, pretty average. But in the Mystery Dungeon games, he can, you can either like him or hate him. And if you play the original, everybody knows that you hate him for everything he has bloody done. Like, god damn. So, here's the thing. Both the Kecleon brothers own their own store, which... Granted, that's nothing different. You go to a store, you buy everything that you need, done. But sometimes, in the original, they would have stores all over different dungeons. Now, the difference here is that... Here's the thing, kids. Here's the thing that you should definitely learn. Stealing is a bad thing. And I've stole things at least one time in the dungeons because I didn't have enough money to pay for it. And I absolutely got beat. I absolutely got wrecked when I did this. Because Kecleon, if you don't understand, is ridiculously high leveled in the dungeons. And it basically means that they are gonna flood right towards your location and kick your ass. Like, damn. And not only that, but I freaking hated this. I absolutely hated when this happened. Damn it. It sucks to fight Kecleon. Ugh. Oh, yes, and yet another one that I personally like because Dawn owned one of these suckers is Mammal Swine. Now, when she evolved Paloswine into Mammal Swine, things really did change, and Paloswine did not want to work with her at all until eventually it did. And I loved Mammal Swine's personality. It was kind of like Ash's Charizard, except I don't hate it all that much. But still, after it got over it, it was completely fine and it kicked a lot of ass. And then not only this, but it's a freaking woolly mammoth. Come on now. Anybody out there for Manny, Manny jokes? No? Okay, I guess it's just me. I'm not fat. It's this fur that makes me look big. It's poofy. Oh, now this guy is really, really tough. Hydragon. Now, with Hydragon, its design is freaking awesome, and I love the lore behind it, being that it's a Hydra. Get it? Get it? But the only reason why Hydragon is even, like, low on this list, it's because that... It's so hard to level Hydreigon all the way up from um, its previous evolutions. I think the gap between it is like 59 levels. Yeah, it's not as much as Volcarona, but damn is that pretty high. I mean, I love Hydreigon, I do, but because it takes so damn long to evolve one... You're pretty much in the end game at this point. So that's why Hydragon is so low, low on my list. All right, Tyranitar. Yep, here we go. Not only is it really based off of Godzilla. Wait, am I reading this right? Yeah, I'm reading this right. It's really based off Godzilla. Shit. <laughs> Okay, now I a little bit respect Tyranitar, Tyranitar a bit more. But not only that, but it's very good for a weather team. Like Sandstorm, boom, done. It's perfect for that crap. But not only that, but to me, it's very recognizable from Mystery Dungeon. As it is part of one of the most badass teams in the original Mystery Dungeon game. Which is named, amply named, if you remember from the anime, ACT. 
which is Alakazam, Charizard, and Tyranitar. So, yeah, Ty Tyranitar is memorable not only because, look at its design, it's badass, but because from the Mystery Dungeon series, it's also a badass. Not gonna argue with that. Okay, at number 60, if you think Swab Blue was a joke, then Levani you shouldn't really laugh at. Because not only does it have, like, the unique typing that all three of them do, but it is beautifully designed. I love the design of Levani. I really do. Levani's kind of awesome. But it falls flat because even though it's a bug grass type, it's doubled against fire types, which means basically you can kick its ass in one fire type move and that's it. Then Levani's just done. So Levani's low on the list because I know I love her design, I do, but seriously, you pick her up against a fire team, she'll suck. Okay, now if you thought Lee Vanny was bad, you'll change your mind when I bring up Roserade. Now, Roserade is... Oh my god. <laughs> like, seriously, any rogue, even, even if it's from my Mr... Not Mr. Dungeon, even if it's from Dungeons & Dragons, any rogue would absolutely love to have Roserade on their team. Because god... Damn, is she fucking quick, but she is very good at sweeping opponents. She, Roserade's very good as a sweeper. Grass type. It's pretty damn awesome. I love the design of Roserade, too, as soon as I saw it. I wasn't particularly, you know, a fan of it in the anime, but... Damn, Roserade's pretty good for a grass type. So, that's why Roserade's even on this list, not only because her design is cool, but she's absolutely a beast when it comes to sweeping. Okay, now a lot of people are not going to justify me for 58, but I love Ariados. As soon as I saw Ariados, I fell in love with it. And there's nothing wrong with that, for me, in my eyes. I mean, this is when I saw it in Heart Gold as a badass. I did. So, I love its design, and it's pretty goddamn good for mid-game stuff. But after that, it's basically done. And it definitely gets out-competed by Roserade for a poison type. But you know what? It doesn't matter. I love Ariados' design. Because it looks badass, but it doesn't feel like a badass. Not quite yet. Until they make some adjustments to Ariados, then we can justify it. Okay, I'm pretty sure this may be my last livestock one, but just hear me out. I love Mary. I do. It's exactly what I wanted. A sheep Pokemon. I just do. Sheep are freaking awesome. I've handled them all my life. I've showed them all my life. And that's why Mareep's even on here. I love the design of Mareep because it looks exactly like a sheep. So when I first saw it, I kind of just went, oh my god, this is the definitive sheep Pokemon. I want it so badly. And when I got Heart Gold Soul Silver, as soon as I found it, boom, caught, done. So... <laughs> I mean, other than that, Mareep's kind of okay as an electric type, but then when it evolves, oh man, that is the best. So, Mareep's on this list because, honestly, it's a definitive sheep. Don't argue with me. Uh, <laughs> another joke Pokemon, Smaug. Are you serious? I'm like, yep. Indeed. Shadot? I love Shadot. I do. 
I played through Mystery Dungeon. I love Shadot's personality as the henchman to Wiggly Tough. I do. And it's got... It's very unique because of its Pokédex entries. Because if you go into the Pokédex entry and you do that echoing thing, Shadot will mimic your voice in the Pokédex. And I found that to be extremely cool. Not only that, but because of this one scene from the anime, I just love Shadow to death. You just don't know what to look for. Don't know what to look now, for. Now, Chatot, you steal away! Steal away! Chatot, you're steal away! Chatot, you're steal away! <laughs> Game, set, match. Okay, here's the other justified one. I love Meowth more than I do Persian. Now, it's probably because Meowth for the longest time has been the only Pokemon that can talk in the main anime series. And this is the reason kind of why I love Team Rocket so damn much, is because of Meowth. Meowth, I know, is an okay Pokemon in the games, and whatnot, but god damn it, Meowth is so memorable from Team Rocket in the anime that personally I just love him to death. I do. Talks like a stereotypical gang gangster. And just damn. Damn, I love this character so much. I do. He's not even a Pokemon. He's actually a human being to me, in my eyes. So don't credit me on that, but still. This is why I love Meowth more than I do Persian, even though Persian, to me, had one quick, convenient kind of, or coincidental moment in my life. But Meowth is still around, and you know what? Meowth is still better than Persian in my eyes. Okay, at the very, very odd choice at number 54, we have Zatu. Yeah, Zatu, I love his design because he's one of the first Native American-themed Pokemon before we got, like, Shigelift, Sh I think it was. Yes, I probably butchered it, but you know what? I'm cool with that. Zatu's unique typing with high special attack and speed it's like, really, really, you have to love this Pokemon. Seriously. And from the original Mystery, du Mystery Dungeon, he was like that futuristic elder that you had to go to. Like Torkoal, except way, way cooler. So I love Zatu basically because of the Mystery Dungeon series and how he predicted the end of the world almost coming to be. And how he kind of helps you figure out how to fix this. Which is basically go up to Rayquaza and have Rayquaza shoot down the meter. But that's besides my point. Okay. Another Mystery Dungeon Pokemon. Really? Really? Yes. Yes. So, even though Ninetales is based off of the Yokai, which... Our fox people, basically Kitsune's as well. They're fox people, essentially, with nine tails. Get it? Get it? But other than that, I love the design of nine tails. And then closer to the ending role of Mystery Dungeon, where she kind of as well saves you from Alakazam's team from kicking your ass. Because, oh, I don't want to spoil it. You know what? You guys need to play the original game in order for me to explain it. You just do. Go play the original game, and you'll know what I'm talking about when Ninetales shows up. But other than that, she's a very good fire type, and I would absolutely love to have Ninetales on my team any day. All right. To my last Pokemon for Part 2, we have Salamence. Now, 
if you thought a couple of these other Pokemon were a bit overrated, Salamence probably has it the worst. Because its Mega Evolution does look a pretty crappy to me, to be honest. I don't like it. But Salamence has actually great attack, special attack, and speed. Which makes him, like, really feel like he's a definitive Dragon-type. Pokemon. He honestly really, really is the definitive dragon, even if a lot of people say that freaking Charizard is, but I don't really give honestly two shits about it. But Salamence, I just love his design for some reason. A lot of people could say, like, oh, Salamence looks plain as all hell and shit like that, but you know what? I kind of like Salamence's design. I'm not gonna lie. For some strange reason, I love his design, and then in my Pearl team, I had a Salamence. And you know what? That Salamence did kick a lot of ass, so I'm not arguing. I am not going to argue when I had my Salamence. So that's why Salamence is even this high at 52. 